Welcome back to our Homestead Odyssey. Tonight we are making soil blocks. And there are lots of recipes out there for making soil blocks, but the one that we are choosing to go with, you use one part um, seed starter potting mix, and you wanna make sure it's the seed starting kind. You don't want the extra organic material in it because for making soil blocks, it makes it hard to form its shape. One part potting soil and one part peat moss. So we chose to do soil blocking because we saw this on some other, someone else's uh, YouTube channel. Um, and there's other people who will use like plastic cups, like solo cups and things like that. We figured this would be better for the environment. But this also helps with the, when you transplant them into the soil to help to prevent the plant from going into so much shock um, and allows the, the, the roots to be able to develop in a healthy way. So the big key with making soil blocks is you want your soil wet. Um, that was one of the big mistakes that we made over the years is we would plant into a dry medium with our seeds and then we'd water, water, water and basically those seeds were getting washed away and we didn't really know why things weren't coming up. So when you make your mixture, you want to pick up your soil and give it a squeeze and you want a little bit of water to come out. But you don't want to pick up your soil and have water just coming out right away. Just when you squeeze it, you want water to come out and that's a good consistency. Move it over here, give it a press, Just squish it some of it out, it helps to form the shape. Okay, so you can see these holes down right here where you can, they, you just put the seed in and you take a little bit of extra soil and you cover it up. Okay? And, and when you water them, you just water in the and the kind of the sides of the tray just enough to be able to get the undersides wet and uh, it keeps the, the the plants able to draw up the water that it needs don't want to over water and you can try to remove the excess water if need be um so this is our soil block or our tray for our soil blocks and i decided i saw this on another channel i don't remember which one but instead of putting little popsicle sticks or markers, which that was my original plan, and they always get lost or they always get moved and you forget what you planted, um, you use tape instead. And since I'm using the, these plastic trays, I can just take the tape off later. And with the soil blocks, I'm just lining up the tape with wherever, whatever row they're in. And so like these are all the same thing. So I did a big piece of tape. So that's one way you can label things. One thing to help your seedlings stay moist in the soil blocks is to drape plastic over the top. It'll keep your blocks from drying out super quick and it'll also keep those new seedlings moist. In the past, we have tried doing just direct sowing and had some success, some not success. We've tried starting seeds inside before and just kind of threw seeds in the dirt, didn't plan when to plant them, when to move them, didn't really know how best to take care of them, just kind of didn't do a lot of research on it. And one of our downfalls ended up being that we were over fertilizing them too soon and so that it ended up kind of burning them up there and uh, killing them. Mm -hmm. And so this year we're trying to do a lot of research into knowing when to plant things, when things need to be moved outside because in the last couple of years, we'd always just end up buying transplants. We would start things in seed, they wouldn't work out, and then we just buy transplants. And so we really hope this year we can get some of these plants to survive till it's time to move them outside and actually harden them off correctly so that we can get plants started early. In Wyoming, we're here in Wyoming and we have a very, very short season. And so we're also hoping by starting things inside, we'll get kind of that head start um, and get hopefully produce a little bit sooner or actually get produce. Um, I want to say the last several years we've planted tomatoes and haven't really gotten any tomatoes.
So how I've been kind of keeping track of what all we are planting and when to plant it is I'm using a bullet journal. And with the bullet journal, I'm keeping track of what month I need to plant. And so I have my plants here and when to start the seeds inside and then when I can start hardening them off and moving them outside. I'm a little nervous with some of these dates because a lot of times we can still have snow during this time um, and frozen ground. So we'll see how that goes. But a lot of those are cold weather plants. Um, and that, you know, this took quite a bit of research and time looking into this. I'll also put a link in the description. I found a website where you put in your zip code and it tells you when your last frost date should be. And then I found another website that you put in that last frost date and it tells you these estimated times. And that was really helpful with figuring out some of these plants. So tonight the things that we are planting, um, we've planted some of them already, but a lot of these are kind of herbs and flowers that take a little bit longer to germinate and get big. So I've got yarrow, purple cone flower, thyme, sage, lavender, and I'm just about to start planting my cabbages. And then we have, I'm gonna start a little bit of kale inside and I'm gonna also try direct sowing some kale. And then I just got these in the mail yesterday and these are comfrey seeds and i've been really wanting to get comfrey and i've had a hard time finding anyone local who is growing it so who, maybe that's a sign that it won't grow well here we'll find out um the zone when i checked it said it would be okay out here but we have pretty harsh weather so we will try the comfrey um and so those are kind of all that we're growing right now we already have started onions, rosemary, parsley, and strawberries, and chives. So those things we started about two weeks ago because they could go in a little bit earlier. So. so so one of the plants that I'm excited about is that we have is it a couple of varieties of elderberries that we're going to be doing. We got a cutting of uh, an elderberry bush that we got from my parents in Utah. And it's a black lace elderberry bush. Okay. And then we got some seeds for some from other, some other ones. And so we've been experimenting with making our own elderberry and rose hip syrup mm -hmm. and honey. There's honey in it as well yep. to try to help us when we've been sick. We just got hit this last weekend with some pretty serious illnesses in our family. So thankfully we're starting to get better and the elderberry syrup has been a, a part of helping us with that. And if I can figure out how, I will try to put a link above for that video that I made the elderberry and rose hip syrup. Another one that I'm excited for is I really like blackberries. We like we like to make jam and, and things like that, but I hate the uh, the thorns that come with them. And so we were, we're have we gotten those seeds yet? No, those are still coming in the mail. So we're, we're, we ordered some seeds for some thornless blackberries, and we're gonna plant those in a container so that they don't spread like wildfire, that's just, which is what um, blackberries typically do. Um, a couple that I'm really excited for is, and I actually haven't ordered these yet, I'm waiting because the person I'm ordering from, she digs them up freshly and then mails them out. So I'm waiting till it's closer when we can actually plant them, is we are going to be ordering some Jerusalem artichokes. That's another one we're gonna try to build kind of a container that will- All these right. Yep, all these right that will keep those from spreading everywhere because Jerusalem artichokes spread like crazy. Um, I'm a little nervous for it because we actually haven't tried them before, but it's still kind of a cool experiment. Hopefully we like it. I have read that chickens can eat them, so if we absolutely hate them, they can be chicken food. Uh, another one that I'm really excited for, and this one we haven't gotten the seeds yet, but they we have ordered them, is the glass gem corn. I have seen videos of it and it's so pretty. So I'm really excited to hopefully get that one soon. Um, in another video we talked about the brown cherries or sometimes they're called a caped gooseberry. I'm really excited to try those. They're in the tomato family and I don't know, they're just one that we haven't tried before. We ended up having these seeds that we bought a long time ago and we didn't even know it was in the mix. and. It's kind of just a new thing to try. 
Yeah, they, they say that they can have like a pineapple mango flavor uh, kind of mixture in them and, and what they look like is they look kind of like a tomatillo they come in that little kind of husk. outer husk. And so we're excited to to see what we can we can get to try some new things and hopefully our kids will be able to like some of the things that yeah. we're planning. So one of the things that we have here as we're making uh, new soil blocks here as we have our leprechaun traps every year we have our kids uh, make traps to hopefully catch leprechauns so today's the uh, day before St. Patrick's Day and so they built little uh, traps in hope of catching this is a little dragon that uh, our son Colton built uh, along with some treats to try to lure the leprechaun in there they built a, a little Lego thing that goes up and down to try to catch the leprechaun. Uh, if I can set it again here. And there you go. Anyways, so here's a little trap door up here. So it's just something that we like to do that's fun for the kids. So one of the things that we have coming up at the end of next week is that we're going to be going to visit Crystal's family up in Oregon. And so we're going to be able to go see the beautiful green country over by Portland and we're going to be going to be doing a video on her father's garden. He likes to garden every year um, and so we'll talk with him a little bit about what he does and how he helps his garden be successful uh, and probably document some of the cool places that we see along the way. One of my favorite things to do is to road trip. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight as we planted our seeds and used our soil blocker. We actually so far really like it. Um, there are different sizes of soil blockers you can get. We got the medium ranged size, I guess. There's a smaller one for just starting seeds, which I, at first I didn't really see the benefit of having the smaller one because I figured, oh, we got tons of space. But once we started planting, we realized we didn't actually have as much space as we thought. And we're gonna have to expand where we are growing our plants and probably get some more grow lights but we so far at this point just have the medium sized ones there is also a larger block which is fairly expensive I've seen some ways to make your own and I think if we end up having plants that need to move into a bigger size we'll either put them into a pot or make our own larger size soil blocks but most of our plants hopefully won't have to move into a bigger block before moving outside 